Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're solving the same problem that we did on the previous video, but with a different method. Here we're going to use the method of determinants to find the currents. Now, I've already, already written down the KVL from loop 1 and loop 2 that we did in the previous video. So if you want to go to the previous video to see how that's done, you get the feel for that. And then you end up with these two equations in terms of I1 and I2. After all, that's what we're trying to solve for, for I1 and I2. So if we take these two equations and put it into a matrix format, this is what it looks like. And then to solve for the determinants, we do it as follows. We find the determinant that's going to be equal to this worked out. So it's going to be equal to 10 plus J20. We have J10 here, J10, and J12. So this is equal to the product of these two, which would be uh, J120. We multiply these two, then we multiply these two. J times J, that's of course a negative 1, and that would be negative 240. And then subtract from that the product of these two, which is j10 times j10. Now j times j is a negative one, 10 times 10 is 100, but because we're subtracting, that becomes a plus 100. So when we add these together, this becomes equal to j120, or actually what I would do, probably want to do is put the number in front. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have a, a minus 140, and we have a plus J120. Of course, I don't like the negative in front of the number, so I'm going to put a negative in front like this. So this is equal to negative, the quantity 140 minus J120. And then later on, I can take care of this negative sign by adding 180 or subtract 180 degrees. But let's see what the angle is on this. So first of all, we get 140 squared plus 120 squared equals, take the square root. And that gives me 184.4. So this is equal to uh, minus 184.4. We'll just go one decimal place uh, here. And then the phase angle will be a minus 120 divided by 140. Take the inverse tangent of that. That would be minus 40.6 degrees. All right. So that's the determinant of these four elements. So now we find D1, which is equal to the same determinant, but that the first row replaced by this. Now, of course, what is 60 times the... Uh, I'll believe it in that form. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so we have 60 uh, with a with an angle of... Oop, with an angle of 30 degrees. We have zero here. Here we have a J10 and a J12, uh, J12 that would be equal to a 12 with an angle of positive 90 degrees, right? If you want to convert it to that form. Uh, yes, and that makes it easier to multiply. All right, let's do that. So this then becomes equal to 12 times 60720. And when we multiply, we add the angles that would be an angle of 120 degrees. All right. And of course, minus zero when we multiply those elements together. All right, now we find D2. Let's put it up here. So D2 is equal to, now we have the same two elements here. So we have 10 plus J20. And over here we end up with J10. Then over here we end up with uh, 60 with an angle of 30 degrees and zero, which is kind of nice because when we multiply those two together, we don't have to worry about uh, a more complicated um, multiplication, but I'm going to replace this by 10 with a phase angle of a positive 90 degrees. That makes it easier to multiply. So here we have, this is equal to zero minus the product of these two, which is 600. And when we multiply, that gives us an angle of 120 degrees. And of course, with the negative here, oh, that doesn't look very good. Let's try that again, 120 degrees. And then with the negative, we can uh, subtract 180 so that you can write this as e being equal to 600 with a phase angle of minus 60 degrees to get rid of the negative sign. So that works. Okay, now we're ready to find the currents because now we can say that I1 is equal to the ratio of D1 divided by D. And D1 was equal to minus 184.4 with a phase angle of minus 
Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Minus. Do I want to do that? Yeah. Okay, minus. Normally what I would do is, I, of course, I could say that this is equal to 184.4 with a phase angle of minus 40.6. Add 180 to that, so plus 139.4 degrees. So you can go either way, right? We can put the minus there, or we can put a plus with a phase angle. Hmm? Should that be a denominator? Um, oh, yes, yes, of course. Thank you. <laughs> I got ahead of myself on that one. Thank you for pointing that. Yes, D1, of course, is this here. So we want 720 with a phase angle of 120 degrees. And then, which one do we want to use? Ah, we'll use the bottom one, so we divide that. Oop, divide that by 184.4 with a phase angle of 139.4. So, that means that I1 is equal to that ratio, which is 720 divided by 184.4 equals, and it's 3.905. 3.905 with a phase angle of 120 minus 139.4 is minus 19.4 degrees. Now, does that match what we had before? Yes, we had a magnitude of 3.905 and a phase angle of 9 minus 19.4. So we're on the right track. All right, let's do I2. I2 is equal to D2 divided by D. And so D2 is 600 with a phase angle of minus 60 degrees divided by D, which is 184.4 with a phase angle of 139.4 degrees. All right, so that means that I2 is equal to 600 divided by 184.4, which gives me 3.254. 3.254. Checking that. Yep, that's the correct answer. What about the phase angle? We have minus 60 minus 139.4. So that's 60 minus minus 139.4. That gives us minus 199.4 degrees. And is that the same phase angle that I got over here? Well, I got a plus 160. Hmm. Hmm. So what I could do is I could add 360 to that. To see if I get the same one. So that was I2 is equal to 3.254. Let's add 360 to that. That gives me 160.6 degrees. And that is the same phase angle that I got over there. So it looks like I did get the right currents again, but this time using the method of matrices and determinants rather than the way we worked it up before. So either method is a perfectly good method. Sometimes this is easier, sometimes the other method is easier, depending upon what you end up with. Uh, this is always fail safe. Uh, when it gets a little bit more complicated, this may be the way you want to go in general. But now you've seen the two different methods of finding the currents. Now the next thing we want to do is find the energy stored in the system, in the inductors and in the cross-coupling at a particular moment in time. So we'll do that on the next video.